David. Yes. Bill Lackner. Hi, Bill. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Oh, yeah. Don't mind if I get you on tape. That way I can immortalize you on our website. <laughs> well, immortalize you. you, you. <laughs> You Are know? we running now? Oh, of course. Well, I appreciate all the letters I get from you on a regular yeah. basis. Oh, an irregular basis, too. Oh, I, yeah. Regular and irregular. I, yeah. appreci I appreciate them all. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do. I get a little. Well, now I can put a name and a face together. Oh, Thank you. Of course. You. Yeah. You should come to. Uh, what was your name again? Deborah Sturdivant. Okay, and you're with? Oregon Department of Environmental Quality. Oh, thank you. The oranges were ODAs as commercial shellfish? Our areas yeah, are the oyster farms. Oyster growing. The blue is ODFW's maps on where people can get mm -hmm. shellfish recreationally. And then these are salinity data. These are sites where we have salinity data. Mm -hmm. And this is this line represents the um, the. As you go upstream, the first site that has a median salinity below 10, I see. which we think might line up with the boundary of um, where shellfish would grow. Mm -hmm. But we want to, you know, we're we want people to look at these and give us input on. Well, you've got shellfish right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, soft shell clams. Soft shell exact. clams seem to go up a little higher. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and again, later tonight, um, I'd like to welcome you all to our public meeting about the uh, Beach Monitoring, monitoring Program's uh, EPA Beach Action Values, as well as um, up-and-coming uh, water quality standards for bacteria. Before we get started, though, I'd like to encourage you all to please sign in um, if you haven't had a chance to do that yet. Uh, there's a couple of different lists, ones to keep track of uh, who all we're reaching out to for various programs. There's also a listserv there. If you're interested in finding out uh, when we do beach monitoring, if you'd like to receive results pretty much uh, you know, within that day, you'll you can sign up for that listserv and you'll get that information. And have the new beach action value that will um, be adopting into the program. So the history behind our program really started in about 1986 when EPA developed some health-based bacteria standard criteria for water monitoring in marine waters and put that forward for states to use um, in their sampling plans. However, this was guidance that was put forward without funding so many states approximately 20, including Oregon, were not able to implement these standards and recommendations because the capacity to build a full program was not there without funding. So jump forward to 2000 um, and that sort of thing and it really is going to depend. Um, everyone has like a little bit of different reaction to um, being exposed to bacteria and it can just depend on the person's own um, current health status as um, um, we know that some people who are younger, younger children, older people, people who have compromised immune systems are going to be more vulnerable to bacteria. So essentially the exposure to bacteria causes an infection which causes an illness and so that's why we're, we're sampling for bacteria in the water. The, the method that we use um, is called Quantitray. But what it essentially does is it estimates the number of colony forming units in a sample of 100 milliliters of water. So I kind of think of it as these little, um, almost little balls in the water of bacteria. And so it's an estimate of the count. And then the count is ex um, expressed in a unit that we wear signs out there along the beaches. They flip down and um, they're bright colored and they let each goers know that there's an advisory in place. So that's the first thing that we do. And then we work with um, our communications team and we get out the press release. And we send that through our listserv as well as a statewide media listserv that a lot of um, TV, radio, newspapers. So the beach action value is coming from EPA in their 2014 recommendations for grantees under the Beach Act. and. Back in the back, we had a, a agenda, and on the back of the agenda, we have a link to the 2014 recommendations guide. So if you want to look at the guide yourself, just follow that URL. Um, you can read all of the information that EPA. Um, that does a good use of coastal contact recreation and shellfish harvesting. It's when you get to the estuaries and salinity starts to taper off, um, 
that's where the, we are talking about where the uses change. For the contact recreation, it's important because E. coli tends to die off when you get above about 10 parts per thousand of salinity. And for shellfish, each shellfish has a different salinity tolerance. And so when you start seeing where the soft shell clams are and the oysters are, they tend to tolerate somewhere about 10 to 25 parts per thousand of salinity. Um, and I'm going to talk a, bit, a little bit more about how we're thinking about designate, designating our uses. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more. Recommended criteria under the Beach Act. Um, it was for contact recreation in marine waters and coastal estuaries without really putting a lot of definition on what a coastal estuary was. Um, and then in 2004, because we didn't adopt those, those recommended criteria, they adopted the criteria for us. So that ended up with some, some overlap in where our criteria apply, especially with respect to coastal records.